Welcome to NOPC, the New Orleans podcast. I'm Richard Dubas, and I'm here with Lance Lance Arnold. Arnold. Yes, and we made it to episode four. Yeah. Uh, Episode three didn't perform well, so if you guys are watching this one, didn't see episode three, please go back and look at it. Check it it out. You got to get them numbers back back up, like the first ones. (laughs) We have rookie numbers on those. (laughs) But uh, let's get right to it. Let's uh, start with the trivia question. And the trivia question's going to be the end of the tease from the end of last episode, so number three. And the question? Uh, what purpose does the lights on the Falstaff Tower serve? Yes, there's a practical purpose for the Falstaff, the sign, the lights, the entire tower. What practical purpose? And probably people older than me are the only ones who really know this because it it stopped. they stopped using it for practical reasons right when I was like two years old. And, and they just recently uh, lit it up again. But, yeah. but there's a practical reason for the Falstaff Tower and the lights on the tower. What does it mean? End of the episode. Find out. Now, beer. Yeah! All right, here we are. Let's try some of this amazing beer. What are we trying today? Uh, well, we're not going with the New Orleans Brewery, but we're going with the Louisiana Brewery. This is Bayou Tesh beer, and I have three flavors here that uh, I found at the local groceries, but they have a lot more flavors and some interesting things that they do with it. But the flavors that we're trying today is the Swamp Thing IPA, <laughs> the Beer Pale Pale Ale, I like that one because he's fighting an alligator on yes, it. Yes, well, <laughs> and, and we'll get to the, to the label on the other one, too. And the Raging Cajuns. The Raging Cajuns, uh, obviously, you know, for UL. Okay, so these are the three we're going to try, but just talking about the labels real quick. On the label right here for the Swamp Thing, I was reading that the Swamp Thing is supposed to be hops, which beers are made out of, crossbred with a Venus flytrap is what the Swamp Thing is, and... Uh, thus, thus that on the label, and then we have the uh, beer ale, and it's a guy obviously fighting a gator. And the raging Cajuns, it's just a simple, uh, s- simple label to represent <laughs> UL. So, but uh, these guys that started this this brewery, they had a simple dream. The simple idea is that Louisiana has unique cuisine, and they're from Cajun country. Uh, Arnoldville, Louisiana, is about 131 miles from here, and Arnoldville is south of Opelousas, north of Lafayette, sort of more towards Baton Rouge, though, uh, on the eastern side of that. So it's it's not on the interstate, but you know. You know, so so it's really you know back there. You have to be wanting to go there to to, to, <laughs> yeah. to be there. But uh, but that's what they want to do. They want to make good beers that match well with Louisiana food. <laughs> they started their brewery in 2009 on St. Patrick's Day. Oh, what a which, good time to start a brewery! <laughs> good time to, yeah, they converted a discarded rail car on their family's farm farmland and the farmhouse into a small brewery, and that's that's how they got their start. And they grew from there. They do have a tap room and a beer garden on the on the property, so you can go there, try out some of their food. Uh, you can rent the spaces when you go out there for parties. It wasn't very expensive; things like one hundred seventy-five dollars an hour to rent the entire place. Oh, really? But let's talk about these beers that we have here. First, let's uh, talk about the uh, A31 Bier Pale. Uh, let's go ahead and open that one up. My favorite art we're opening up first. Here, I'll let you have that one. I'll throw some of that for me. Oh, okay. But uh, this one pairs well, it says, with artisanal cheddar. That's not really Louisiana food, I, I don't think. But also, it says it goes good with boiled seafood, Turtle sauce pecan, uh, chicken and sausage gumbo. Mmm. So, uh, it does yeah. have a nice smell to it. It's not bad, especially for a pale ale, because you know how I feel about pale ales. <laughs> so, that's it. Uh, but uh, I like it. It's, 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 it's good. definitely, if you like hops like I do, it does have that strong hoppy taste. Sure. So, uh, but the next one we can try is. The Indian Pale Ale, which is the Swamp Thing. The Swamp Thing they describe as hoppy, citrusy, and hazy. Let's try it. I'm excited. I'll let you have this bottle, too, since it's a... I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll take the Rage Occasion. <laughs> I guess Lance wants me to be nice and limber and loose for the rest of the show. <laughs> Cheers on this one. Cheers. <laughs> I always like the smell of... 
Yes, Ooh, that one's good. It's 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 good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not bad. I mean, I like it. You know, as far as Indian pale ales go, this is one of the better ones that I've had. And like I said, Indian pale ales or IPAs are either a flip of a coin. This is definitely a good one. I would buy this one again. And the next one we're going to try is the Raging Cajuns, the genuine Louisiana ale, culture style, and it's made with Louisiana rice. Ooh. Now, you'll definitely know which one I like the most by which one I drink out of <laughs> the most during the show. Yeah, this one's for you. We got our Huda shot glasses. Cheers. By far my favorite of the three. I really like this one. It's smooth. No, oh, this one's really smooth. It's really smooth. I think that is the top one. I think that it goes that one for me, then this one, then this one's close. Well, that sucks for you because this one's mine. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like that. <laughs> I like all of them. And I'm not just saying that because we're a positive. I really do enjoy this IPA. It's really hard to find a good IPA, and this is one of the good ones. And they, they have a few. They, if you need to go to their website, which I have the, the link right here right now, and you go to our website, uh, nolasun.com, and you know, check out everything that we're talking about here today. And I'll have links to the brewery and their beers there for you, too. But uh, I'm going to talk about some of the few other beers they have. They have a bunch of other ones. Go to their website and check it out. But they have interesting names for their beers. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, very Louisiana. But first, I'll start with Jolie, Jolie Blonde. Which I didn't know what this was. The, the proceeds from this one goes to help McNeese. What I did not know is that the band plays a, co- uh, a sort of a Cajun waltz by that name at McNeese. Whenever they score a touchdown, they play they play that song. Oh, so really? that's where they got the name from. Another one they have, uh, a triple IPA, which I'm sure I'll three times and not like it. But but the name has me interested in at least tasting it. Well, I, I guess I don't want to say that. Uh, because the name of it is LA31 Testicles. <laughs> yes, I really want to taste their uh, testicles. Uh, but it's a triple IPA with 12%. Holy cow, that is... A lot for a beer. Yeah, so that, that'll have you feeling good. Uh, <laughs> they have one, Amil Sauvage, the honey beer made with Bernard's honey from Henderson, Louisiana. So they're, they're using local rice for this one. They're using local honey for their for, for this beer, too. So, they, I mean, they're really outsourcing and doing, doing it local, doing it, I, I would say, right, you know, yes. supporting other, other people. And then uh, the last one that really caught my interest was the LA 31 Walking Dead Coffee Kolsch. Oh. Yes, and I assume I'm saying Kolsch, right? Uh, I'm sure as we do more and more episodes, we'll learn enough about beer to say these things right. <laughs> <laughs> we might need to take a class or two. <laughs> yes. But they use Arts Coffee Roasters Organic Papua New Guinea Beans. So uh, Papua New Guinea. I said Papua. Uh, New Guinea beans. And this surprising blonde ale is packed with coffee flavored and aroma. I like coffee. Uh, I wouldn't <laughs> mind trying it. Maybe, yes. I'll, maybe I'll have to put a little cream in it, you know. <laughs> uh, so uh, th- those are the beers that we have by them. And, you know, they're, they're quite a ways away, but you can find their beer at a lot of local stores. Uh, on North Shore Twyquista Pace, they probably have it. Uh, you know, if you're uptown, you can get it either at Rouse's or at Bromart. Uh, but all the local groceries seem to be carrying a lot of these beers that you can't get at the big chain groceries. And I would definitely say if you're a Raging Cajun fan or a Big Nice fan, what better way to support your team not only by watching, but also giving a little money to a local brewery that will give it to your team. And if you're not a Raging Cajun fan, this is a good beer. It's really good. So. It's really good. Now to news. Now we're back with the news. The first thing we're going to talk about in news is 
probably an explanation on why whenever it rains semi-hard in town, it, it, it seems to be flooding easier than normal because they're upgrading the pump stations. You know, they're saying, oh, we got all the pumps on. Cheers which, to that. <laughs> it, well, it's sewage and water board, so take everything with a grain of salt, they say. But they say, you know, all the pumps are on, and, and, but it's still flooding. And we're going, why are they flooding? We're scratching our heads, spending so much money on it. I think we got part of the answer now. <laughs> and if you live in New Orleans, you've probably heard this story before, but they found a car. <laughs> they found a car or cars uh, inside some of the drainage pipes, you know, the big drainage pipes in the canals, blocking in areas that are prone to flooding recently. So, And there's no telling how long the cars have been there. NOLA.com reported that the, the Sewage and Water Board sent some cameras down and saw at least one car, maybe more than one car, blocking. And they, they reported it's going to take thousands of dollars and a long time to, to pull these cars out. Uh, but they actually did it in a few hours. They did it like the next day on uh, yeah. Thursday. At 2.30, they were able to pull one of the cars out. And in New, in New Orleans fashion, its trunk was full of Mardi Gras beads. Yes. <laughs> uh, the car they found was a Mazda 626. <laughs> had a registration or tags on it from 2007, so no telling how long, well, the only telling how long it's been down there is it could have been down there since 2007. Yes. So, and you do find cars and canals in New Orleans. They found like 10, 12 cars in Bayou St. John. Jeez. It's because people in New Orleans, uh, if we want to get rid of, stop paying our car payments, <laughs> or if we just you know, want to claim the insurance on our car, oh, my car was stolen, and I just drove it straight into Bayou St. John, and you know, nobody's ever going to find it. When getting a brake tag is a pain. <laughs> so, honestly, I think the canals and bayous all around this area uh, probably are lined with cars. So, no telling what this person was. But, of course, they, they got away with it. Because you could still say my car got stolen and somebody must have just crashed it into... Yes. Um, but, but it also goes to... Uh, they said the car could have been down there for years. Yes. So why aren't they checking these things? If they know it's a flood area, they, they, they say it could have been 15 years or more since they've checked these waterways, throughways to see if they're clogged. Yeah. Around, and they're finding Mardi Gras beach, trash, appliances, and now cars. Yeah, it's basically the whole, why aren't we checking these canals after continuous flooding? Because especially mostly floods during a random rainstorm. Like, we'll get hit with a tropical storm, we'll be fine. But a rainstorm, you know, yeah. is destroying people's homes. It's After that first one, they should definitely go down, well, make it a habit. Once a year, maybe, go check it out. They say it's expensive to do all that. But it's more expensive with all the flooding that we get. And they're estimating that 22% of our waterways that know for drainage are blocked. And they said that this car did pro prove to be a significant impediment to water flow. No crap. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you know. I mean, the entire car filled with beads. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... I did see a funny... Somebody said, are they now going to put, uh... Those uh, meters down in the canal way so they can start charging people when they leave their cars down there. <laughs> I'm surprised that by St. John they don't have meter maids down there driving. Because <laughs> they'll boot anybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, hopefully they take care of that and that'll leave some of our flooding problems. And, you know, Surge and Water Board, they're on top of it. It may be, you know, 15 years late, but <laughs> <laughs> they're getting after it. All so, right. uh, what else do we have in news? Well, we have an exciting uh, story about the film festival coming up, and they released their lineup. But the real exciting part is that we have a recent NOCA graduate, Velvet Humans, and like his so. movie <laughs> called Burning Kane is going to be the centerpiece of the festival. Yes, it's a, uh, it's a big thing for him, and his films already made the festival circuits, because a lot of films will go from festival to festival, and the idea is hopefully that they'll get picked up by a distributor and get a national release. Uh, many of small films have become big films that way, so that's what he's hoping for, to get noticed. They'll go to Cannes Film Festival, they'll go uh, you know, to the New York, the Tribeca Film Festival, where it won a Awards. It won um, the awards that I won at Tribeca was best Mar the Marquee Founders Best Award for a Narrative Feature. Uh, Wendell Pierce, he won Best Actor at the Tribeca Film Festival. And uh, Best Cinematography, Philip Newman won for that also. But the, the biggest thing about that, he was the youngest entrant ever in the Tribeca Film Festival. He won, and he was, uh, what was it, 17 years old, I think, when he made these films. Yes. When he made this film. 
and 19 when he won the award, which is really impressive. So you you might want to keep an eye on this director because he'll probably have a lot of great works yeah. coming out. And what the film is about, it's uh, it's amongst the Canes fields of rural Louisiana, a deeply religious woman struggles to reconcile her convictions of faith with the love she has for her alcoholic son and troubled preacher. So... So it's it's a, a, it's a, it, it, he wrote this screenplay. He put this film together. Talented kid. Uh, he's going to make us proud. He's going to make New Orleans public schools proud, Noka proud. Yeah, and, and hopefully, you know, he'll shoot and talk about things having to do with South Louisiana and New Orleans. It just keeps, you know, putting the spotlight on us. Definitely. This is the New Orleans Film Festival, and I think uh, 22% of the films at this, uh, 26% of the lineup are films made by Louisiana filmmakers. Awesome. So, and there are 230 films at, at this film festival, but some of the other ones by Louisiana filmmakers is Easy Does It, Lost Bayou's another film made by a local filmmaker, Mossville's <laughs> another, uh, Louisiana, and you can, I'll, I'll tell you uh, how you can get more information on this, and you can go to the website. I will put a link in the comments below so you can instantly sure. go there and see where these films are. Or go to nolasum.com and check out the podcast uh, accompanying blog, which will have pictures of these films and the filmmakers and probably links to their bios. Another movie, The Long Shadow. Oh, man. And finally, uh, Louisiana film is Up From the Streets, a celebration of the culture of New Orleans through the lens of music. That's going to be a really cool one. Yes. Uh, so if you are interested in this, go to the website. The film festival takes place October 16th or October 23rd. Uh, we'll probably talk more about this before we get there, and maybe we'll even try to get to some of these films. And uh, I'd love to try to get one of these directors on here. It'll be at the, uh, the CAC, the uh, Advocate, the newspaper. They have a theater there they'll be showing some. The Orpheum, Britannia, and also the Broad Theater. All these theaters will be showing some of these films. So get on the website, get your tickets, because a lot of these will sell out, especially the locals, because the whole family's going to see it. Yes. Let's talk about some entertainment, and I think we have a fun topic. We do have a fun topic. It's the 49th annual Southern Decadence Festival, which is coming back for Labor Day once again. So, you know, beware if you're going down to the French Quarter. You know, go down there and you know, <laughs> know, know, know what to expect. Yeah. I uh, just and uh, just what the Southern Decadence Festival is. It's the. Uh, it's. What the Southern Decadence Festival is, it's the largest LGBT event in New Orleans. And, of course, as I just said, it's going to be Labor Day. But a bigger part of the event is the 45th annual Walking Parade on Sunday, September 1st, where thousands of LBGQTIA plus people <laughs> will be. Uh, I'll, here's a graphic to tell you what all that means. Okay. So, uh, and... Trust me, if you if you are not offended by any of that, you should definitely go and see it. It is a wild time. It is a fun time to go watch the parade. If you're easily offended, do not go down do there. Do not go down Just there. avoid. That's what I, I don't understand. Well, I'll never understand these people anyway. But really, you're going to have the streets full of the LGBTQ down there. Mm -hmm. And... You're also going to have a bunch of the people with the huge crucifixes screaming at them through foghorns. And then you'll find some of the people that are you know, going through the festivities screaming back at them. Just do a little more booze. Just do a little more anal sex. Just look at a little bit weirder porn that then somehow it will satisfy. But your sin is even boring you. That is the only reason why you people will spend hours No, you're not changing each other's minds. Nobody's going to find Christ because you just yelled a Bible yeah. verse at them. You know, and nobody that's thumping a Bible, well, it's more likely, but nobody that's thumping a Bible is going to all of a sudden say, hmm, I think I want to be gay now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or I want to be a plus, or, you know, I, I don't identify my gender anymore. I always wonder those Bible thumping people and the that yell at people, I wonder when they go home, do they like put up their megaphone and go, you know what? 
that was a good day I had today. <laughs> I, I think I did God's work. A lot of conversions. Because at Voodoo Fest, I had one almost follow me into the line, screaming at me how I will go to hell for black yeah. magic. Yeah. I was like, I, I don't know any black magic, man. <laughs> but, but, uh, Southern Decadence started in 1972. A group of small, diverse friends with different orientations, different races, different sexes. You know, they just wanted to start having a party and celebrate these differences in a safe place. And and it just grew. As things in New Orleans happen to grow, mm-hmm. it turns into a huge festival. And you know, people all over the country hear about it and it just becomes you know this big thing. So, uh, you know, beware of that when you go down there. And Bourbon Pub is usually that corner of uh, St. Anne and, uh, and Bourbon Street where Oz is in the Bourbon Pub, that's usually the heart of the Southern, De- Southern Decadence Festival. The streets are closed. You can't drive by there. Yes. I do go down there. Uh, my wife and I used to go down there just because it's just such fun to watch. And, yeah. you know, if you're not offended, it's just, it's crazy. It's Might so want to leave wild. the kids at home, though. Yeah, so <laughs> and, uh, before we get into our stories, we have uh, each have a, a Southern Decadence story to tell. Uh, if you're interested in going down there, it kicks off at the Bourbon Pub, I think on the Thursday night, uh, and the Bourbon Pub will be open 24-7 throughout the entire Decadence Festival, which they're not o- normally open. But they're going to have the Battle of the Bulge contest. There wasn't a description from what I saw the Battle of the Bulge was, but I think you know what it is. I guess also, too, if you want to enter, call them up. <laughs> yeah, or just show up. Uh, <laughs> just show up. <laughs> so, uh, I won't be entering. <laughs> Neither will <laughs> I. Uh, but anyway, uh, and on August 31st, uh, they have the Bourbon Street Extravaganza. It's a free concert right there on the same corner I was just telling you about, corner of uh, St. Anne and... And Bourbon Street. You it's, dance it's in the, the street. street. Yeah. Yes. And they're saying that once the show's over, they're even expecting some porn stars to stop by. So they're probably left over from the Battle of the Bulge. <laughs> I guess bring your autograph book? I, I yes. don't know. <laughs> but, uh, bring a Sharpie. <laughs> yeah, my, my story, because uh, I work two blocks from Good Friends Bar at, at another bar, and I saw once when I was on the, the corner during Southern Decadence by Good Friends Bar, which is a uh, Dauphine in St. Anne, one block off of Urban, two guys get out of a cab once. These guys are dressed nice and all that, but as soon as they got out of the cab... They took their pants off in the middle of the street. They took their pants off. They're wearing some kind of banana hammocks and just rolled their pants up and put it underneath their arms and walked down to the, to, to the pub in Oz. It's like that's the kind of stuff you're going to expect to see. You're going to see a lot of asses. You'll probably see where the bulges came from. You know, so, yes. so don't be offended. Uh, we don't, just don't go down there if you are offended. And like I said, maybe we'll leave the kids at home for this one. Yeah. So, so what's the story you said about walking the dog? Or? Uh, my friend was Uber driving around the time, and I'll send him a link to the show so he can, so he can comment and see if I get the story wrong. But he had a pickup for a decadence festival, and the guy asked him if he could bring his dog into the car. My friend loves dogs, so he's like, "Yeah, bring your dog, man. I don't care." And what he saw was that it was a guy on a leash with just a collar and assless chaps going roof roof and hops in his car and rolls down the window and sticks his head out. So Uber drivers do. Yeah, during decadence, what happens in New Orleans stays in New Orleans. There are yes. people that are buttoning up businessmen in other cities all over the country, all over the world. They come down for decadence and... They turn into a dog. They they put into the battle of the bulge. <laughs> and they just drop their pants right there, put underneath their arms, and they walk about. But it so. is a fun time if you're very open-minded or you just, you know, don't care or support the LGBT community. You should definitely go check out and walk around and hear it's, the facilities. It's fun to watch. They're all having so much fun, even if you're you know, not of, you know, if you're not gay or all of that. If you're open-minded, it's it's fun to just go down there and, and people watch. It's it's incredible. It's amazing. If you have never done that, do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but that's it for our show, except for one more thing. All right. So now it's the part of the show I know a lot of our fans have been waiting for. The answer to the trivia question, which is... What purpose does the False Staff Tower serve? The purpose of False Staff Tower? 
before I get to that, let's talk a little bit about the history of Falstaff beer. It is a national brewery, but the Falstaff uh, Brewery in 1936, Falstaff purchased New, uh, National Brewing Company of New Orleans and the building that it is. So the building underneath the tower, they purchased that building and they started brewing their own beer there. They looked at other places to go with that. They actually thought about buying Jack's uh, Brewery, mm-hmm. uh, but they, they decided to go ahead and buy this one and... So that was in 1936, but it wasn't until 1952, and uh, on the website I looked at it, it said at exactly 8 p.m. on August 1st, 1952, they got into the weather business. What that means is that that tower is meant to tell the people of New Orleans what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. So the ball on the top of the tower has different colors to tell you what the weather's supposed to be tomorrow, such as the, if it turns green, it's going to be fair weather. If it's red, it's going to be cloudy. If it's flashing red, that means it's going to be rainy. If it's uh, white, it's going to be showers, I guess heavier showers than just the red. And if it's going red to white, red to white, red to white, red to white, back and forth, we're going to have storms. So that's what it means. But even more than that, they have the word, the advertising. This is a great idea to get people always looking and thinking about Falstaff to have that advertising all the way up there. But if you know, sometimes the lights flash, false staff. Sometimes it, it crawls up, false staff, or it goes down. It lights up the F A L S T A F all the way down. That means something too. If it's if the lights are going F on down, that means that tomorrow it's going to be cooler than it is today. If it, it starts from the F at the bottom all the way up at the end of false staff, that means tomorrow's going to be hotter. So, so yeah, when you're driving on I-10, you know look. Uh, I-10 going uh, west, make sure you look to the uh, right and see yeah. what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. That's and, awesome. And then we're lucky to have it back. They stopped doing it in 1978. And then just recently, it's not a brewery anymore, but some developers are trying to turn it into luxury apartments and things like that. But part of all that, they decided to go ahead and, you know, redo the tower and get the tower working again. So don't don't get on your weather apps, weather.com or weatherbug or whatever the hell you use. Just drop out a Falstaff sign. You'll know what's happening tomorrow. Yeah. The New Orleans way. (laughs) And and, and if this tower's not there anymore, that means hurricane. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you probably shouldn't be in New Orleans at that point. (laughs) That means hurricane. But uh, that's it for our show this week. Yes, and definitely check out uh, next week's episode and the other episodes that we have so you can learn yes. more about different beers, trivia, and Last facts week's episode. and news. And go to knowsome.com and you know, check out the company w- uh, website for each of these podcasts. You can get the audio podcast there. You can get our audio podcast on Spotify and other, other services. So check it out, and we'll have all the links and pictures of all the things we talked about in videos on knowsome.com. Remember, hashtag... NOPC and make sure you like and subscribe and also too if you have an awesome brewery that you would like us to review or maybe a band or an artist or something please send us yes, a message we'll happy to we'll, spotlight it yes so uh, so go ahead and check out noahsum.com which is the home of NOPC check out the articles on there and check out you know everything latest with NOPC and Follow uh, and like uh, knowsome.com on Facebook, and you'll know when our new new podcasts come out and share it. Share it often. Share it all the time. Yeah. So thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.